build care for the Steyr AUG. Now, this is more of a video for if you're out in the field or out at the range and you want to go ahead and take care of your weapon system uh, out there. It's pretty simple. Uh, everybody should know how to take care of their uh, weapons out in the field or when they're away from home where they don't have, you know, a cute little cling bench and, you know, all this other stuff. So, here is a Shimago. This will be my little assistant for this video. I just got done firing about, uh, eh, 90, 90 rounds, three magazines, right? So, I played around a little bit and I slammed them through, but... Uh, so there wasn't very much trading value in that, but the point was to kind of just hammer some rounds through and get this thing hot and get it nice and dirty, right? So uh, basically I have it on uh, full gas, so it's going to illustrate where this thing gets dirty, and it's going to illustrate, you know, a, a lot of what happens to the system when you, when you uh, run it with dirty ammo or run it with a lot of ammo. So uh, with that said... Uh, First thing you need to understand about the Steyr AUG is yes, it's very simple. It's renowned for having removable barrel. It can be broken down. It is modular. It uses a lot of polymers and stuff like that. But also, the thing with that simplicity is it also puts stress in certain areas. And that's not necessarily bad stress. It's just uh, basically limits where this thing fouls up at. So really, uh, the Steyr AUG is really easy to handle in the field because the uh, stress points that you got to look out for, at least the areas that build up a lot and can kind of clog up, it's basically just the gas system and the the bolt itself can get some too, but it's really not as bad as, you know, other areas. And of course you got the bore, so that's easy to handle. So the next thing to note is that, kind of like your M16s, you actually have an area in the back here which I have actually filled in. I have a boar snake, a rag, and I have a little thing of Slip 2000. Now, it's up to you how you want to take care of your uh, weapon systems, what you want to uh, put in them. It doesn't have, it doesn't take up too much room to cut off a, an arm sleeve from an old t-shirt or something like that, and uh, you know, put a put a 223 boar snake in there, and then you know, a little pillow pack of, of something. I like Slip 2000 because I know that it, it works well for after a couple of uses, this stuff will just wipe clean. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, take this barrel off and uh, take out the, uh, basically I'm going to field strip it, right? So that's pretty much it. It's still pretty warm, so, you know, eh, it's not all that bad. It's like, it's like in the 20s right now. So, you know, it's already able to be handled, but you can see that it's still got this oil on it. The Slip 2000 has not burnt off like my Break Free CLP would have. And it did get pretty, pretty warm. So, yeah, it's still good. It's still all good. So the locking lugs are all nice, and all I need to do is do that. And you can see that it's got its nice little, little chrome finish there. So it's very beautiful still. One thing you'll notice about the gas system is it does pour into the receiver here. So you can see you get a lot of gunk there, and you got some silver that should be showing up right in this area. Right in there. There you go. So that whole area up up forward should be silver, but it's not something that gets plugged up. And this is just the area where it rides inside here, so it gets pushed back. So this area could be wiped off or it could just be left. It's got a kind of a cone shape to it, so it's still good and it's it's still wet, as you can see. And that's very unique. It, that's one thing Slip 2000 does very well is it stays wet despite fouling, and that's something I don't see a lot of other lubricants doing. Typically they'll dry out at this stage. So the one part that I'm very curious about seeing is the gas system. Now I probably took off the, or I put the barrel on uh, prematurely in, because <laughs> Because one of the problems is getting this little piston out, and it seems like it's going to be pretty easy, but you just take the gas part right here that I just showed you and push it on out. And, yeah, so it's not too stuck, and as you can see here, it's not too bad, and actually I can just take my finger and wipe all this stuff off. That's pretty cool. Uh, that's not normal because usually all this stuff will stay black, but let me go ahead and get out my cleaning stuff 
or at least just the rag for now. I'm not too worried about running a boar snake through it just yet. I'll wait for a little bit longer, but we'll go ahead and see what I'm able to just wipe off here. And this is just regular gun lube. This isn't like the EWL, the Extreme Weapons Lubricant. This is just the regular gun lube. So, let's see. The top is going to stay black. So, this area is wiping clean pretty well. So, it didn't do perfect. It didn't get it off all the way, but this is the first time it's had Slip 2000 on it, so that's pretty good for right now. Now, the rest of this, obviously I can re-lubricate it with my pillow pack, but, yeah, I mean, it's getting every everything off, but, I mean, the bolt face, you can clean that off and then re-lubricate if you wish. I mean, it can build up a little bit in this in this area right here. So sticking your pinky in here with a rag will typically show you a lot of the crap that blows out the back. So these feed ramps here can get dirty too from the brass, or not the brass, but the, uh, the jacket. So wiping that off uh, could be a good thing. And then, of course, the top of the gas system here. Right here, just wipe off the outside. And that's pretty much as good as it's going to get, but it'll, it'll work for now. Now, as far as the inside of this, there's really not much you can do unless you have like a 45 caliber brush that you can, you know, kind of twirl in there. I would just stick with nylon, put a little bit of lubricant in there, and then have like Q-tips or whatever, but that's kind of intricate, but it's not really necessary. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to get out my pillow pack. Basically, all I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do a swirl on the inside with some lubricant just to wet it down. This isn't going to hurt it. It's not going to cause unnecessary pressure or anything in here. Um, but it will wet it down, and then I put the spring back in there. Now, then lubricate the gas key, or the gas rings, and this area right here, the top. And then shove that in, and then I like to put just a drop on top, and then it'll disperse around. And then I put lubricant on the cap. <clears throat> And there we go. And then I just spin it around a bit. So kind of free flows and stuff. So that's not really very important to do, but you know, you can do it if you wish. So that's all I'm gonna do for for that. There's really not much else I need to lubricate, but there is one area I will lubricate. So I'm just gonna put this barrel back on. Next thing I am going to lubricate is going to be my bolt head so or the bolt lugs anyways because I want that nice and lubricated and I'm also going to lubricate the feed lips because that is the area that feeds the rounds in from the magazine and it is showing some wear so lubricate that nicely use my finger to get in there and put that on there and you don't need to lubricate these rails they're they're very smooth, they're highly polished stainless steel, but you can, it doesn't hurt. It's not gonna, you know, cost you anything to do it. So, you know, it's pretty well lubricated. Probably more lubricated than it needs to be, but if you're really feeling like these recoil springs are a little bit, um, you know, gritty or whatever, these holes back here, you can put a drop of lubricant in each of these holes. And the springs are within these and it has a little cap on this side and it goes all the way at the end. In order to get them out you have to unscrew the ends here. So that's basically how these work. So if you want them to be a little bit smoother I would go ahead and put a drop in here and then put this back together and lock back the bolt and put it up like this, barrel down or muzzle down and that'll get the lubricant into the springs a little better. So can lubricate that channel a bit so that's that and shove this back in probably be a little more organized here so you don't really have too much space but it's enough to uh, store everything you need in here the uh, emphasis is on the word need but yeah I know you're not gonna get like cleaning rods and all that stuff like an M16 uh, would allow you to do but you know it does good enough I think so there we go it's all stashed in there and put this on 
lock it in, and you're good to go. So you can contain all your cleaning supplies in here. And also, I know some people are looking at this like, why do you have duct tape right here over the ejection port? Well, in my experience from actually doing un a muzzle up presentations, scraping this off, or even just going to the shoulder and uh, uh, scraping this up against gear, the ejection port cover will actually come off. And uh, that's a big problem and it's happened several times. So what I did is I used Gorilla Glue or Elmer's glue for the ejection port cover to hold it in place because I'm not going to change it around. And then I put a thing of duct tape over it and I, I just put it over one of my heater uh, vents to heat up the duct tape a little bit. That way the, the glue will actually thin out a little bit and kind of conform to this a little better. And yeah, that's basically what I did and it's doing a very good job holding in place. So. That's that's my method for keeping this on because if you're actually using your weapon with gear and stuff You'll find that that's actually a problem sometimes But with all that said that is how to maintain your Steyr AUG in the field uh, Let me know what you think in the comments below if any of you have actually been issued one of these and, and uh, Actually had to do this uh, go ahead and let me know what you think about my method versus what you guys were taught to do or what you did do and uh yeah, I hope to see you guys in another video. Uh, shoot your Steyr AUG often and uh, give some love. Uh, thanks a lot for watching and you guys have a good one.